welcome back to da -da -da -da, the Blue Box Files. We've got another interview, another full-length interview, as part of John Comer, the man who was Doctor Who, my Doctor Who documentary, which is still available to watch on the Tom Mason YouTube channel. Now, this interview is a full-length version where I interviewed the current person that's playing uh, John Pertwee, uh, the third Doctor, Tim Trelaw. Now, this one was really interesting and also a little bit strange all at the same time. Strange because we ran out of, when I was filming it, I ran out of SD cards and, and memory and battery and the cameras. So there is a cut off point that, so if it slightly looks off halfway through, that's why. But I tried to make it so it didn't look off at all. He's a fascinating man, he's funny, he's hilarious, and he's a very good words of gumming impression. Please welcome. Tim Trollo! How did you get into doing voice impressions? Well, I, I, I don't do voice impressions, funnily enough. The, um, the third, third Doctor voice impression is the only one I can do. Um, it was um, a spot of luck, really, um, because I was my first big finish story was Destination Nerva with Tom Baker, and I was playing a Victorian zombie lord. As you do. Yeah. And so I put on a quite sort of a fey voice, sort of like that. Sort of. And Tom Baker, I was saying to Nick Briggs, as you know, who's the executive producer yeah. of Big Finish, said, um, oh, he sounds like someone. Who does he sound like? What does he sound like? <laughs> and they couldn't work it out. And then suddenly, during the middle of the day, he said, sounds like John. <laughs> so, um, so it came from that, really. So it's, it's yeah. just by luck. Yeah. Uh, and then, obviously, because I'm working on it, yeah. I've sort of um, developed the, 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 the vocal tones and whatnot. But I'm, I can't do impressions, really. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. Well, did you actually watch Doctor Who before you were in Doctor Who? Well, I did, I did when I was, um, yeah, when I was a kid. I, uh, Tom Baker was my, yeah. the fourth Doctor was my um, my Doctor. Yeah. I used to love K-9. I used to adore oh. him. Um, and, yeah, the doc Doctor Who was probably my favourite character as, uh, as a child for, for all sort of um, TV programmes. And um, But the problem was I didn't know anything about the regeneration thing. So... When he regenerated into Peter Davison, yeah. I, I couldn't handle it. <laughs> I, I didn't know what's going on. This is not Doctor Who. <laughs> so when I watched it the next week thinking Tom Baker's going to be back, it was Peter Davison, wow. a man in a cricket a jumper. Yeah. And I was, well, this isn't Doctor Who. So I, um, I stopped watching. <laughs> but it's, it's a shame because I used to love it. I used to love it so much. And now, obviously, I've found a, a, a love again. Oh, yeah, go on. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're like preparing to do the job as uh, John Pertwee, how do you prepare for it? Well, I watch um, I watch quite a few videos a couple of weeks beforehand and try to immerse myself back into the voice yeah. and um, listen to clips of him. I watch in the demons quite a lot, which I, I really like. That was a yeah. good one. Yeah. And the mutants. Um, and yeah, it's just really sort of immersing myself, looking at his vocal yeah. mannerisms and his and his physical mannerisms. And just getting back into it because you know it's I only do the third doctor say three three four times a year at yeah. most. Yeah. So um, I know it's about three days at a time. So yeah, I have to work at it for a couple of weeks beforehand, just getting the voice back and the, and the, the uh, essence. And do you own any of John Pertwee? Do you only like replica costumes of John's? Not yet. No. I, I'd been asked if I'd wear a cape into the studio and a grey wig, <laughs> but I, I I haven't as yet. But um, no, I haven't got any. Uh, any of his costumes now. I'm sure they'd be worth a few bob, right? Uh, if he could get hold of one of those. You would, mate. Yeah. Uh, and so, has any of, have you ever met any of John's family since doing The Third Doctor? No, because I don't know what they're going to do to me. I don't meet them. <laughs> do they might work. So you don't know if they like it or not? I, I don't know. Um, no, I, I haven't been told, but um, the fans seem to, and, and Katie very yeah. much does. So, um, yeah. Um, Sean, I haven't, uh, I don't know Sean at all, Sean Pertwee, his son. Um, so, no, I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I don't know what their reaction would be. I, perhaps I don't want them. Well, who knows? One day you'll find out. One day I'll find and, out. And how do you reckon the legacy of John Pertwee has stayed alive since you inhabited him? Well, I guess it gives the, um, the, the fans the opportunity to hear new stories. And because you have the Doctor in place and Katie's still there and... Uh, other people like Sergeant Benton and yeah. uh, occasionally Mike Yates yeah. um, and some of the original cast will be involved and can still do it. Um, 
new stories are written for them, so it keeps that era alive, yeah. the era of the early 70s. Yeah, it's big finish, it licensed a lot of stuff. Do you reckon they'll ever license words on coming? You're tying it. Oh, I'd love that. I would absolutely love to play words on coming. Do you have yeah. to keep these on, Sally? It'd be far better than Mackenzie Crook. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and so, um, how do you reckon the fans have reacted to, you, to your performance? The, um, the 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 main reaction has been very very positive. Um, I mean, obviously, the first uh, box set was done, so I played the narrator, yeah. uh, and then would do the third Doctor voice. I think that was a sort of gentle and respectful way of uh, trying to test the waters, yeah. and the response was very 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 good. So, um, I mean, obviously, it's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. It's a bit of sacrilege to some people. I understand that. Um, and that's that's fair that's fair enough. But yeah, luckily, and I'm very grateful that the the coverage has been um, and the um, the support has been huge. Yeah. Fans. And when when doing Big Finish, when you when you're in that famous red booth, if it is still red, uh, do you do you like act do you like act like you're on camera or or, or do you just stand there and just read the line like you're supposed to? Well, funnily enough, um, uh, radio is. I'd say a lot of actors would say is possibly the hardest media, more so than theatre, TV and film, because you, you've only got your voice to convey yeah. uh, something through to an audience. So you can't just... It took me quite a while, because I used to work at um, the BBC Radio Drama Company oh, yeah, yeah. when I left um, uh, Lambda, yeah. where I trained. And um, I, you learn that it, you, it's not just your voice, it's got to be in your body as yeah. well. So, yeah, I have to... Uh, in fact, Katie Manning will sometimes... When I'm uh, delivering a line, if I can't quite get it, she'll do the, a pose for me to go, this, this pose. And it does help, sort of the hands on the hips or the that, or the hand behind the head, uh, or the I see, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so it does help, a physical performance does help, yeah, very much so. I've, I've kind of learned that more and more as I've gone along. And for people that want to get into the industry, would you would you recommend people to go to drama school as, a, as an option to get into it or not? Absolutely, I would. Yeah, um, it's a very, very tough industry. It's very unforgiving. Um, I've been very lucky that I've worked quite a lot up until COVID, really. Um, uh, but luck plays a huge uh, part in that. Yeah, talent is only a small portion mm. of um, of what it takes to 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 get success and to work. Um, I would say, go to, if you really want to do it. Don't do it to be famous. Um, if you're doing it to be famous and get rich, you're doing it for the wrong reason. Yeah. You should do it for the love of it. Yeah. So, um, but you, yeah, of course, you should go to drama school, really. I mean, that helps you, that gives you the training and the ground. There, yeah. You know. For the love of the story, the big finish would say. Um, and so David Bradley uh, plays the third Doctor in the world of audio and on TV. Do you reckon if they ever needed a third Doctor to be present for a story or for like a small cameo, would you ever want to reprise yes, it on yes, TV? Yes, yes, and yes, and yes. Because yeah. TV pays much more. Yeah. Um, to be honest, um, yeah, of course, I'll yeah. definitely do it. Um, but I think probably, you know, Sean Pertwee looks like his dad, doesn't he, more? Yeah. But, um, yeah. oh, God, if they asked me, of course I would. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'd, I'd get a grey wig on. I yeah. don't mind. Yeah, would you not mind sitting for hours in the makeup department? No. You look older than you are. No, no, yeah. as long as they pick me up, <laughs> feed me, <laughs> and um, they're absolutely fine. Yeah. And they're very charming, by the way, saying uh, to make me look older. Because yeah. I think, I don't know, yeah. how old was he when he started? Uh, he's probably about my age, actually, yeah. when he started the... I mean, I'm 24. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, there you are. Yeah. Uh, I'd have cut following numbers onto that. <laughs> what, 2,400 or? No, just four. Oh, right, just four. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, before I follow. Uh, yeah. and, and so, when, when you when you listen to the audios, do you sometimes, if you've not heard the audio for a while, do you forget that you've done it? Well, I don't I don't like uh, listening to myself, weirdly. A lot of actors would say that. It's the same as being on TV. Yeah. I don't really like watching myself. Um because I've become hypercritical, so with the playback in the studio sometimes, just when they're trying to find out where they were, yeah. uh, I can't bear it. The same, Daisy Ashford is the same, who plays yeah. Liz Shaw, she played her mum. Yeah, um, Yeah. we can't, we can't, we can't handle it. Because to us, we don't sound anything like yeah. what we're trying to play. Yeah. But I think that's just, I think that's probably yeah. just being hypercritical. And I think that's, I think as an actor, you should be doing that a lot of the time, is not being um, complacent and being comfortable where you are. I'm certainly never am, you know, I don't go into, the, oh, I'm doing Doctor Who. Oh, that's no problem. I have to do a lot of 
um, research to get that voice and yeah. and everything back. And and because because of like a lot of big Finnish people when they go to conventions, that they're like the most popular people there. Do you ever go to a convention and feel overwhelmed by the amount of love and support oh, you get? Given? Ab- absolutely, every single time. I absolutely love them. I've just been to Gallifrey one in LA, oh. and I was in Chicago Tardis last November. I'm doing one. I'm doing Spearhead. Oh yeah. Um, in May, that's where you may spearhead from space. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I said a photo of me in the shower <laughs> uh, with the shower cap on. Yes, I think. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, replicated because it's exactly the same. Yeah. The shower is exactly yeah. the same there. Um, yeah, I always get uh, overwhelmed because the amount of love is is fantastic. And people yeah. with this joint, you know, this shared passion. Um, you know, because sometimes you have that passion on your own where you live, and then when you get to you meet other people with the same passion. It's just, it's wonderful. And the love and the output, it's just, it's just such a magnificent experience going to. So would you say that you're proud of the work you've achieved? I'm proud of, I'm proud that I've been um, cast as the third doctor for Big Finish. Yeah. Um, whether I'm proud of the work, I, it's yet to be seen. But um, um, I'm always self-doubting. Nick Briggs will tell you that yeah. uh, I'm always... He always goes, shut up, it's great. Because I'm always going, how did that sound? How did that? Um, but a couple of us are like that, you know, a uh, bit needy. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm proud. I will look back and think I'm proud, but, I, you know, it's, I think that's later on down the line. And would you say that working at Big Fish is a happy environment, or do you reckon it's a very more like a, a trying to make sure you get the best performance out of you rather than making you feel as happy as possible? It's the happiest place of our world wow. it's a happy space the, the because obviously with the third dog we got nick briggs yeah it's great fun great laugh there's me and there's one of the girls it's either katie uh, daisy or sadie yeah and john Culshaw. it's always a very happy environment yeah. full of laughter full of irreverent humor uh, a bit naughty sometimes <laughs> and we but we tell us that they work seriously because it's yeah. such a nice a nice environment to work in yeah. People want to do the job properly, yeah. you know, and you're committed to it because you... But we mess about in the studio all the time, all the time. And with Katie being there, does that make you more confident that you're doing, that you're doing a, a really good job at it because she's she's lived that experience in TV? Work? Yeah, absolutely, and her support has been wonderful and uh, it's non-stop, and her validation is obviously critical to me. Yeah. And um, she yeah, she's wonderful, and she's, you know, she's just a ball of... Just this ball of energy. It's just, it's just wonderful. She's just a wonderful, kind, giving person, isn't she? And have you got any upcoming Third Doctor box sets that you're looking forward to that you can talk about? No, <laughs> um, I can't. Um, we did one. We recorded one. Uh, what was the last one that came out? It was the Return of Joe Jones. That Return of Joe Jones. That's just yeah. come out, isn't it? Yeah. So there's another one we recorded about three weeks ago. Uh, so I don't know when that's going to come out. Probably towards the end of the year. I'm not sure. And I'm doing something. I'm doing another two things. Um, I'm not sure of the third Doctor stories. Are you, are you not rec- have you not recording them ones yet? No, 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 no. I'm doing them in um, May. Yeah. I think. Uh, as I say, we just done one, so I can't I can't tell you anything about that. Yeah. I don't have to kill you. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that was good. That was good fun. That was with. Um, I don't know if I can tell you. Yeah, that was with Daisy. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's a great, it's a great team. It's just, it's just great fun. Yeah. And and if you could hire any actor to play an original character, as Big Fish are very good at quite doing original characters, as your third Doctor companion, who would you try and uh, try and kidnap into the show? To uh, to play my companion, well, an actor. Yeah, yeah, an actor just to play a brand new companion. Uh, one of the f- actresses I fancy, probably. <laughs> <laughs> to put Rose Byrne or who do I fancy at the moment? I'm not sure. <laughs> so I couldn't have answer. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't pick out an actor. Um, yeah, I know because I know so many yeah. really good actors. I would love to. I would love K9 to be my companion. Yeah. And and do, have you enjoyed? Not seeing your time though, but have you enjoyed your time so far working as the third Doctor? Oh, I've absolutely loved it. Yeah, I've loved every minute. I mean, it's it's sometimes a bit stressful when you're recording and you're not 100 percent sure that yeah. you're doing. The good enough job, but uh, it's just a great, it's a great, it's just great fun doing it. And it's sometimes I forget. Oh yeah, I played the third Doctor for audio, and it's I sometimes forget it. Yeah, forget would, it. You know. Would you say it was a trip of a lifetime? Oh yeah. In this pad in the pun. Um, well, maybe going to New Zealand and Australia with work that might have been my trip of a lifetime. But um, 
if they could take me abroad again, yeah, no, that would be a trip of a well, lifetime. Yeah. And will you be going to Dallas for one next year? I don't know. I don't know. It depends if they invite me. I'm, I'm hoping to wangle an invite to the Long Island convention yeah. this year. Um, but I've got they, I've got in touch and they said they might that might work. But um, oh, I've got California. I've got to LA. Who wants, doesn't want to go to LA for a Who week? Well, thank you for letting me interview you. No, no, Tom, it's been an absolute pleasure. Don't forget to subscribe to the official Tom Mason YouTube channel. 